In this demonstration I'll be explaining how to use value formulas and how they can be used to extract data into individual cells in a very flexible manner. These extractions of values can be mixed with formulas from Excel. In this particular example I've created a matrix of value formulas that have extracted data from a vendor table and the amount of purchases that have been made over a period of time with dates going across and the vendor accounts going down. All the cells in the matrix are referencing the start year and month. If I change these values you can see that the individual cells are automatically refreshed. This is the example that we'll be working on We'll start by creating a new workbook and clicking on cell C5. Before we start the example, we'll concentrate on understanding what value formula is actually doing. I'll go to the menu and select value formula and this will bring us into the query builder window. From here we can select our query mode which is aggregations and the product is AdventureWorks. In this particular example I'm using the purchasing order header table to extract the total cost of each purchase. So I'll select that from the table and in the purchase order header there is a field called total due and I'm going to output this field. You can see that when I drag a field in the, into the output section its aggregation appears depending on its data type. In this case it's currency so it's logical to sum the amount. There are other options to override this. For example I could count the number of items or get the average. If the item was a code of some kind I could get the minimum or maximum value as well. In this case I just like the, the total uh, due for the purchase and I'll preview the result. This is the total due for all vendors. What I'd like to do is create a cell where I could enter in the vendor account code. So I'll just open up vendor and create a filter on the vendor number. You can see from the lookup there are various vendors. I'll just choose one of them from the list. And I'd also like to restrict the vendor to, a, to the date of the order. So I'll drag up order date into the filter area and just set the date to today's date. And I'll click finish. You can see in the cell the value has been returned for today's date. I'd like to change this formula now to reference cells on the spreadsheet for the account and the date range in which the aggregation is to be performed. I'll enter the vendor account code into cell A5 and enter a to and from the date range in cell C3 and C4. In this case the 1st of January 2004 to the end of the of January 2004. Now I'll go back in and edit the value formula by double clicking on cell C5. The next step is to adjust the filters that are constants at the moment to reference the cells that we just created for the vendor ac account number and also the dates. 
first of all I'll select the account number and double click the cell A5 and also the two value for account number and the same for the date C3 and C4. You can see that it's resolved the cell references and pulled the value out of the cell into the actual query itself. And if we preview the results now, you can see that there are no particular purchases on that date. But if we change the value and the account will we'll discover that there is data there. So depending on the date range and the account number entered, the value formula is going to re-extract the values. If I put my cursor up into the formula area, you can see that cell C5 is referencing the, the dates and the account number. What we'll do now is extend this formula into a grid matrix with vendor accounts going down and months going across like we saw at the beginning of this video. A quick way to get a list of all the vendors is to reuse the lookup. So what I'll do is double click the value formula and bring up the list of vendors and I'll select from this lookup all the vendors that I'd like to paste into the spreadsheet. I'll hit Control C and just close that window and come back to the spreadsheet and paste those values in. Just adjust the column sizes. After adjusting the column sizes, you can now pull down the formula and copy it down the spreadsheet. And you can see that as I copy down the formula, it's adjusting the cell references to pick up the values at the top and to the side and extracting the, the purchases for that particular account. We're going to use this to create a matrix going across with dates that are driven by a formula up in the top of this report. Instead of hard coding the to and from dates across the top of the report, I'm going to make them relative to a year and month that I enter into cell B1 and B2. I can do this by creating two labels, year and month, and the start year will be 2004, and the start month will be January, and I'll go up and put a name range over these two cells. Filter year, and filter month. Next, I'll adjust the to and from dates so that their formulas that will reference these two parameters, year and month. The formula for the start date will be equals date and the year will be obtained from cell B1 and the month from B2 and the day will be the first of that month. Now that we've got the formula for the start Let's copy this across for at least six months of the year. And we'll adjust the column size and go in and edit each formula so that the month is offset by one month. Plus two, plus three, etc. Once we've done that, we can then set the end of each month as equaling the next month minus one and we'll just drag that 
across for the full six months. Now that we've got the, the months sorted out across the top and the vendor accounts going down, we're ready to now copy the value formula across and also down by dragging. You can see that as we've dragged it across the formulas have been recalculated. We'll just set the format for this so that we remove some of the decimal places and we're getting closer to the sample report. I'm going to show how flexible this reporting method is by now inserting a total at the end of the A range. And I'm just going to type in and I'm going to add a sum on all the vendors beginning with A and I'm going to copy that across and then apply formatting. change the background. You can see that if I go up and change the month now to June, all the values are automatically recalculated. In the example, I changed these date formats to just show the month and year by using cell formatting. Just go in and change these now. I'll select the range and change the format to month and year and set the background. And enter up here that it's uh, the vendor and their name. And I'll hide the two date range by setting the color to the same as the background. As you can see that the value formulas are very flexible. You can reference cells in your spreadsheet for their criteria. One thing I could do with this report is to insert a column in here and create an opening balance or I could create a, a running total of purchases today. Another change that I could make to this report is to consolidate the vendor accounts so that they become ranges and from the value formula reference those ranges and in that way I get less rows in my report. I could also change the descriptions of the vendor so that they are a reference, a value formula reference, so that if for whatever reason the vendor account name were to change, the report would pick up the current name for that vendor. Value formulas lead to a very flexible report design, whereas table formulas assume that the report that's been created is in some form of list, even though you can use formulas embedded in the table. This concludes the value formula overview.